Hi, welcome back. It's Rob Bryanton, the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog, and today's entry is uh, called The Big Bang and the Big Pie. So uh, Jason has created this uh, nice little Big Bang of Rob Bryanton uh, video effect for us here. Uh, this entry is dated November 18th, 2008. If you'd like to read along, please go to tenthdimension.com slash blog. Alfred Nobel, the inventor of dynamite, used the large fortune he amassed to institute the Nobel Prizes and the latest Nobel laureates were announced a few weeks ago. The Big Bang Dynamite. There's a joke in there somewhere. Make one up if you want. In You Are Me and We Are All Together, I quoted this fascinating bit of information from Michio Kaku's book, The Physics of the Impossible. Feynman revealed the true secret of antimatter. It's just ordinary matter going backward in time. This simple observation immediately, immediately explained the puzzle that all particles have antiparticle partners. It's because all particles can travel backward in time, and hence masquerade as antimatter. This interpretation is still the explanation currently accepted today. So that was from uh, Michio Kaku's book. Antimatter, like wormholes, is one of those concepts some of us have learned about through science fiction, which might lead us to believe that it's a fictional concept. Watch out for that wormhole, activate the antimatter drive, blast them with the antimatter gun. It turns out, though, that the issue of why our universe has so very little antimatter in it is one of the great unsolved mysteries of cosmology. North has its south, time has its anti-time. In entries like scrambled eggs and time, in or scrambled eggs and time in either direction, we've talked about the mainstream science concept that there could be other universes where time flows in the opposite direction to what we're experiencing. Think about what Feynman is telling us then. If a conscious observer were traveling within our own universe in time's opposite direction, they would be faced with a universe which is made up of an unexplainably large number of antiparticles and antimatter, and almost no matter whatsoever. From their perspective, the fact that our universe is so asymmetrical would be an equally unsolved mystery. In a few weeks, the 2008 Nobel Prize recipients will travel to Oslo and Stockholm to receive their awards. You can click on the link if you're reading along in the blog right now to read about the Physics Prize, or you can also click to see a down, or to download an eight-page PDF with some nicely presented background information. This year, the Physics Prize is being awarded in pieces. Half went to Yoichiro Nambu of the University of Chicago, Illinois, USA for the discovery of the me mechanism of spontaneous broken symmetry in subatomic physics. And the other half was awarded jointly to Japan's Makoto Kobayashi and uh, Toshihide Maskawa, sorry sir, for the discovery of the origin of the broken symmetry, which predicts the existence of at least three families of quarks in nature. Our universe is a temporary deviation from symmetry. To sum up their discoveries very briefly, these scientists have de demonstrated that there is an underlying symmetry that our universe comes from, a concept I've talked about many times here. And because of that underlying symmetry, at the origin of our universe, there should have been an equal number of matter and antimatter particles. The fact that our universe has so many fewer antimatter particles then must be because there were more particles than antiparticles back then. So, while most of the opposing particles and antiparticles obliterated each other, there were, according to these scientists, about one extra particle of matter for every 10 billion particles of antimatter. And that one out of 10 billion particles are the ones that remain to create the astonishingly huge universe we find ourselves to be in right now. Another mind-boggling concept to wrap our heads around. Thinking about timelessness now, let's add one more, even more mind-boggling concept on top of all that. If it's the accepted definition of antimatter that it's just matter that is traveling backwards in time, how are there any naturally occurring antimatter particles at all in our universe right now? If those particles were created within the Big Bang, they're going in the wrong direction to be part of our universe. How can that be? It's because the Big Bang is an illusion. In the past is an illusion, we quoted this famous phrase from Albert Einstein. This separation between past, present, and future is only an illusion. 
And this is where it takes us. Richard Feynman showed us that antimatter particles are coming from the future and heading towards the past. So if we're talking about symmetry being broken to create our universe, we're not just talking about an event that happened 13.7 billion years ago. We're talking about a broken symmetry which occurred to simultaneously create our universe and all of its possible timelines, right from the Big Bang to the final moment of our universe in a place that is outside of time. In this project, that place is a point within the seventh dimension and above. That point is a selection pattern which chooses our universe and its basic physical laws from out of an unfolded background state where all possible universes and their possible timelines exist simultaneously. Gibbon Gerbrand called that underlying state timelessness, and in my project, I call that the indeterminacy of the tenth dimension in its unobserved state. Saying the Big Bang is, a, is an illusion is a way of saying that the Big Bang's effects are only one way of looking at the information that becomes our reality. In the biggest picture of all, the Big Bang, just like time itself, becomes irrelevant because we are talking about the place where everything happens all at the same time. Our now that we are observing at this instant then, as amazing and beautiful and complex as it might be, is still only the tiniest slices of that much larger pie that represents every possible state for every possible universe and every possible way of organizing the information that could potentially create any of that. So, enjoy the journey on your tiny slice of pie. To close, here's one of the videos from my song, which includes the lyric, The Big Bang is Just an Illusion. And the, the song is called The Unseen Eye. My name is Rob Bryanton from the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Enjoy the journey.
Unseen. 